Hello lovelies, welcome to Amy of Melbourne. My name's Amy, obviously, and today we're going to be doing something that's new to me. I'm going to be making my first historical cosplay. So why am I doing this? Well, you know what an earworm is where you listen to a bit of a song and it gets stuck in your head and you just can't get it out until you listen to the whole song? Well, I have an idea worm. So I assume that the only way to get rid of this idea worm is to make it. Over a month ago, I was watching Eurovision, as I do every year, because I am a massive Eurovision nerd. And I was super excited to see like Let 3 and Voyager. And then this happened. Cardia from Finland in his little green bolero. I will tell you that now I am a massive Kari fan. If you haven't heard like all his other songs or even if you haven't somehow heard Cha Cha Cha, then you should go and see them. Obviously not now. Now you should watch this video and like and subscribe. Um, but once you finish this, then you should definitely go and check out his music. It's amazing. Anyway, at the same time that I was watching Cardia do Cha 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 on Eurovision, Rachel Maxi came out with this video. of her making the final Cinderella reveal renaissance dress from Ever After movie. So I'm watching these two things and my brain says to me, Hey, Amy, don't you think the renaissance sleeves on Rachel's costume look a bit like the sleeves on Karia's costume? And that was it. In my head, I decided that I really wanted to make and to see a renaissance Cardia inspired cosplay. So now it's time to make it. I have done so much research for this. I've looked at lots of costumers videos and I have looked at a huge amount of portraits from the Renaissance, particularly for the sleeves. And I have come up with this design. I'm not 100% happy with this design. There is still some things that I'm trying to needle out in my brain about how exactly I'm going to do. But for now, it's a really good place to start. The costume we made from a chemise underlayer, which is going to be green. This is either going to be made from really light um, muslin, cotton, or a lightweight linen. On top of that, there's going to be a petticoat layer, and this is also going to be green. And then I also want to do like a fancy front panel. Over those things, I'm going to put my fashion stays pattern. I'm going to adjust it. And I'm going to have that over the top of the chemise with a open front skirt attached so that you can see that fancy layer of petticoat underneath. Uh, and then I'm also going to have attached sleeves that go over the chemise. I'm going to be using a bit of a fancy fabric because Kari's costume is pretty fancy. Uh, I'm not going to be doing pleather like he does, I assume it's pleather, um, for two reasons. One, practicality, that's hard to sew, and two, financial, that's really expensive to buy. So instead I'm going to go with velvet because that's also fancy and it was available during the Renaissance so it does make sense. And I've been watching a lot of Angela Clayton videos and she almost always adds a lot of embellishments and a lot of sparkles and I want to do that as well just because, you know, it's a Mr. Worldwide costume. It's got to be pretty extra. Um, so I'm going to fussy cut out lace and add those embellishments over the top of the velvet and I also want to try and add in some pink for the cha-cha dancers and for Cardia's band and then maybe even a little bit of yellow for Hardia. I also want to make a snood for my hair. First thing we're going to do is mix up some colour. So I'm actually using a cold dye, which is a protein dye, um, which is like seven parts yellow to one part blue. And then I'm going to put my fabric in there. I'm just using some muslin. Make sure you mix it a lot. I didn't mix it a lot. You should have. I think it's too... Yeah, it's just too light. I think I've got to dye it again. It is. It's good. like the colour itself is good, but it needs to be deeper. This is the fabric so far, and it's a pretty good tone, but it's just too light. Like, it looks almost yellow. I put my hand underneath it, so I'm going to over-dye it. And this time I'm going to include more salt. Um, I want it to be more like this green. So go for that. It's much better. Let's see. Okay, 
So I think for the chemise, I'm going to use the twig and tail driftwood blouse dress. I do need to make changes though, obviously, so it makes more sense. I'm going so I'm having a look at the driftwood blouse dress from twig and tail to try and work out if I can use it for my chemise, but I am concerned about how far down the bottom, like where it meets the sleeve and the bodice, because I want to wear this underneath a corset thing um, and have sleeves over the top. I think that that might be a problem because I want it to be right up in the armpit. This tutorial by Daisy Victoria is exactly what I need, but I don't have any money because uh, I spent it all on velvet. Um, and once you actually like exchange rate this, that's that's quite expensive. So I've gone to my library, otherwise known as my bookshelf, and I grabbed this book, and it has this pattern here, which isn't exactly right because this is English, to be honest. Um, and I want something that's slightly more Italian um, or even German. Um, but basically, I need to cut out the pieces for dress front, dress back sleeves and if i want to i can add some goodos goodos goodets whatever the hell they're called um so that i can extend um the sides of the smock on the bottom um and then i also need some gussets which i hate doing but oh well we'll do this ended up all being super complicated and so i did my own thing after a lot of research what you need is a lot of rectangles you're going to start out with the body piece, you need two of those. I made mine 135 by 150, but you know, go with your measurements and how big your fabric is. From there, you're going to chop out some triangular shapes at the top here. My measured down 30 centimeters and across 20 from each side. So you end up with four triangles cut off your fabric to make this. Then you need your sleeves. Your sleeves are 110 centimeters by 70 centimeters. They're probably way too long. You need two sleeves because you've got two arms. If you don't have two arms, don't do two sleeves. After that, you need a neck binding. I made mine 135 centimeters, I think. Um, and it needs to be 2.5 inches wide or six centimeters wide. Same thing for the cuffs in terms of width, but they only need to be as big as your wrist or a bit bigger. So you can fit your wrist through it. And then finally, you need some gussets. And your gussets are going to be approximately 15 centimeters square. And that's it. That's your cutting guide for making a chemise. Then you have to actually cut all of this stuff out. Make sure that you measure it. Because I'm using a cotton and it's a muslin, I've decided that I'm going to rip everything. Um, it keeps everything on grain. It can warp things slightly. I didn't find this too bad on this particular fabric. But, you know, you do you boo. If you want to, like, draw a thread or something and live your life. But... This was quick, this was easy, and it's a chemise. Uh, it's also really helpful to have one of these big cutting mats because uh, you can use that to measure everything, and I found that super useful. This is where I'm taking off those triangles on the different uh, edges of the body piece whilst listening to some Gaia. Once you've taken them off, then you can actually use those at the bottom if you flip them over to make the uh, bottom of your hem white. So I'm trying to make the gussets make sense for this. <laughs> what I'm trying to do. <sighs> just basically copy Morgan Donna's um, chemise, the 16th century chemise that she's never had a video for. Why Morgan Donna? Um, anyway, so what I think I do is that I shift, shift <laughs> the sleeve down, but not all the way. So it doesn't meet up the top exactly. And then this gusset goes on to the front of the top. Side of the sleeve, and then the sleeve and the top get joined together. Oh, I think. <laughs> I tried to film far more of the sewing of this, but honestly, it's just clouds of green fabric everywhere. Okay, so this has gusset on it. This gusset. I still have the French seam, but it's on, so that's a sleeve. So the whole bottom of the sleeve is sewn up, and it's attached to the both sides of the gusset. Like so. 
So then, the next part where I sew it onto each side of the body of the shift, and basically they're reacting like part of that sleeve is a big gusset. Sort of all goes together. And I'm not doing the top of the shoulders. Yeah. Because there isn't a job top of the shoulders for mine. It's kind of raglany. Anyway. Okay, so this dress is unnecessarily ginormous. <laughs> it is made for a giant. Um, it actually does look like it was made for a giant. Like, look at it compared to my, like, ironing board. It's huge. So now I am going to gather the neckline. And then, whoop, sleeves into a cuff and work out the bottom, make sure everything fits, like in a really exaggerated, way too big kind of a way. And hopefully it doesn't look too stupidly exaggerated. Okay, I'm just gonna show you guys, I very poorly pinned this to my dress form, but <laughs> as you can see, it's an awfully large amount of fabric that I have to gather. Look how long these sleeves are, like they're nearly to the ground. So they're probably too long. I may need to chop them, but it's just like, it's massive. The next thing that you're going to do is you're going to gather up the neckband using some basting thread doubled over and then you're going to use a big needle. I've got a darning needle, but you can also use a shiko needle. And then just do a running stitch all the way around the neckline so that you can gather it up. Okay, so I'm going to divide this into four. This is made like quilt binding and not made as bias binding because I don't, I don't have enough scraps to make some damn bias binding. Evenly pin that neckband all the way around the top of your chemise and then gather so that your gathers are small enough to fit that size. So that's it gathered into the band and then that'll be sewn on, flipped around, stitched. Bob's your uncle mate. So, here's the basic try on. It is long enough. It's ginormous in the sleeves. I feel like, it's like traditional dance. Anyway, I think it looks ugh, right up here, like where it sits is good. Oh my God, it's like four minutes. The next thing you're gonna do is you're going to whip stitch the edge of that binding all the way down around over the top of the raw edge. I'm choosing to do this by hand. I find it a lot easier and it looks better, I think, but you can also use your machine if you want to.
make sure that you also do your cuffs the same way. Then you're going to starch the living bejeebas out of everything that you've just done so that it all stands up nicely and puffy at the end. make the petticoat you need a very large couple of pieces of fabric and then you're basically going to attach a facing along the top of it and then iron it down. Okay so this is my giant amount of fabric for the underskirt. Not even all of it. I still have to do the brocade as well. Um, but I'm going to cartridge pleat it so I'm marking out my fabric on the back side on this uh, every inch. And then I'm going to separate it into, I think, four. Uh, and then the fifth panel is going to be the um, brocade. I could be wrong though. I think I might do a split skirt, so I'm not sure. Um, we'll see how it goes. But for right now, I'm just going to cartridge pleat so that I've got everything ready. Okay, so I think I've decided what I'm going to do for the petticoat underskirt. I'm going to do it more 18th century style where it comes around the back and ties in the front. The front ties around the back and then you still have like pocket things. Um, but I only have white tool tape so, or herringbone tape so I'm going to dye some more things uh, which is great and then pleat attach and that's basically done. This is the exact same dye mix that I used for the chemise and other things. Now you're going to gather up or pleat actually um, all of that fabric. If you're just pleating, um, I thought I was going to cast with pleating, but if you're doing regular pleating, you don't actually have to do the facing. And then you're going to whip stitch the top of that to your uh, twill tape um, and then also um, use sewing machine to sew that down as well. Then you're going to do the sides of your skirts, put them together. You need to start this about 30 centimetres at least down and you need to have at least two centimetres of seam allowance so that you can fold that top over um, to make the opening. I never one the length of the stitch there, which is like a centimetre, not even. And then over again so that it is in line with where you stitched up to. And iron that all the way so then you can sew across here yeah, so. Up on. so this is how you put your skirt on you do the back part first and then the front part and there it is that's a petticoat As you can see, the snood's pretty easy to make. It's just lots of chain stitches um, and then tied up in the end with a chain. And then added a bunch of bedazzlement to this with a hot glue gun. This is the snood. I'm pretty sure that it's finished. Um, I followed Angela Clayton's tutorial where she put it over some plastic bags, which is why it's really annoying to listen to and hold. Um, but basically it's just crocheted chain stitches, which are linked together with single crochets. And then I embellished it with some stuff that I already had laying around my house. There you go. So here is the chemise. As you can see, it's absolutely massive. It does fit, but I think that the sleeves are going to be too long. Like, like they need to be longer than normal because they're going to have the over sleeves. But these, these are long. Um, changing them won't be that hard, but I'm going to leave it until after I've made the over sleeves so that I can see exactly how much more or less or whatever I need to take off from those. This is the petticoat. Um, it does look like a green screen. I'm not sure if I'm okay with that, but I don't really have a choice. Um, I love the flat section at the front and the pleating, um, and it's really comfy to wear actually. But it is, it's really heavy. Um, I think between this and the chemise, 
we are already at about eight meters of fabric, maybe a bit more. Um, and if I do the under petticoat as well, then we'll be at, oh, I think we're at about 12 or 13 once I add that in. So yeah, this, it's only, this, there's a lot going on in here. Okay, so those are the pieces that I have so far that I have finished. Uh, I think the only thing to do now is to try them on. I thought that I would put them on with my current fashion stays that um, I have uh, as samples for when I release the pattern. Um, so I thought I'd put that over the top. It's not quite what it's going to look like, but it's almost like peasant renaissance cardio. There we have it, the current state of my Cardia Renaissance cosplay, which yes, is the stupidest idea I've ever heard too. If you like this video and you want to see more videos from me of cosplay, plus size clothing, sewing, making, whatever stuff, then like, subscribe and do all that kind of stuff and leave me a comment if you thought this was interesting or what else I should have done. In the meantime, see you later. Like honestly, just look at this. <laughs> the screen to itself. Thank you.